Hi, we're talking 90s today. Okay, um, the thing that gave me the idea is that um, Drew Barrymore has a talk show and she had on uh, Jenny Garth and Tori Spelling as her guests. So it got me thinking about Beverly Hills 90210, but also about Melrose Place. Um, just to give you guys some dates, um, okay. Beverly Hills Line Show and I started in 1990 and lasted for 10 years. And Melrose Place started in 1992 and ended in 1999. Um, okay, if you were a teenager in the 90s or a kid in the 90s, you know about Beverly Hills Line 2 and oh, if for no other reason than Aaron Spelling and Aaron Spelling's daughter, Tori. And, um, some behind the state, behind the scenes stuff. Um, Tori Spelling auditioned under another name, so they wouldn't just give her the role because of who her father was. Um, all right. The stars of it were Jason Priestley, Jenny Garth. Well, they were all stars, but the one that got top billing was Jason Priestley. Until he left in season eight, and then Jenny Garth got top billing. But I would say they're all um, significant because they all had major storylines, and this was 1990, okay? There were a lot of topics that weren't being talked about at all. So the only way you got to know about anything was through TV, and especially teenagers so they put on um things about teen pregnancy drugs and breast cancer and you name it they talked about it i mean they talked about it a lot um all right and then also i have to note brian austin green um he started on the show and he he went all the way through the show but what I'm saying is he grew up on the show, literally. He went from five-something to over six feet by the end of the show. And everybody thought he was hot. Um, this was also during the time of the Bop, teen Bop magazines and the and the posters on your walls. And, you know. Um, so, it was Jason Priestley, Jenna Garth, Tori Spelling, Brian Austin Green, and... Uh, Luke Perry. Luke Perry was huge. Huge. Okay. He started in the third episode of season one because they needed a bad boy because they knew that if they kept going with the cast they had, it was going to be too generic. So they needed a bad boy. So bring in Luke Perry. Um, sadly, he passed away at the age of 52 because he had a massive stroke. Um, so yeah, kind of the end of an era when he passed away. Um, and then, and then of course they did what all dramas do. In the beginning they had the parents and everything, and it was Jim and Cindy Walsh. And then by season five, it was like the parents moved away. Okay, you're supposed to believe these people from Minnesota move to Hong Kong in season five. So they start college and there's no parental guidance whatsoever. The only kind of adult figure, although it wasn't a parent, was Nat Vesicchio, the owner of the diner that all the kids went to eat. But other than parents, there were no parents. No parents, okay? Also, season five, Introduced um, T Tiffany Amber Thiessen as Valerie Malone after Shannon Doherty was basically fired because she didn't show up to work a lot. So they fired her. Plus, they said she was very hard to work with. That kind of stuff. Um, so they kind of brought in a resident bad girl, you know, to carry on the role. And then Andrea Zuckerman, Gabrielle Carteris. Oh, another fun fact 
is that most of the cast were not teenagers when they playing them, and they were way over 21, and it was like a secret that everyone had to keep their real ages, so no one would know. Um, yeah, because Gabriel Cartier was like 29, 30 when she was playing a teenager, and as the show went on, she really had, um, she got pregnant in real life, so what they did is they wrote it in the storyline, and they wrote it like she fell in love with this bartender, Jesse Vasquez, and they had a kid. But it's because she was really pregnant in real life. Um, yeah. And so, um, once again, I mean, it really helped my life because I didn't have any other, um, you know, uh, acknowledgement. I didn't see any any drugs or anything like that. And so what I'm saying is the awareness was there from that show. Um switching over to uh Miller's Place. Okay. So Miller's Place was supposed to be a spin off of Early Hills Not Doing Up, which means what they typically do is they take a character from Beverly Hills 920 and they pop in a character from Miller's Place so it kind of assimilates you into this is a new show. And then also, to get you to watch, they have characters from Beverly Hills 920 just happen to show up in Miller's Place. Um, the way they did this was because Jackie, um, Kelly, Kelly uh, Taylor, which was played by Jenny Garth, her mother um, has some work done in her house or something. And Jake Hansen, the one on my place, was supposed to be the guy that did all the work. So then she falls in love with him, quote, unquote. And then she comes in the first episode of my place looking for Jake. And then, and then what's funny is, like, after that, you don't see any more characters from Beverly Hills 920. On Miller's place at all, at all. Um. All right. Another fun fact is that um, Miller's place was written and created by Darren Starr, and he also created Sex in the City, and um, the other one. There was another one he created. Um, but so he wanted kind of to do different things than Aaron Spelling did, which is he put a racial, um, he put a black girl in the series. And I'm saying that I don't mean it's derogatory. I'm saying that there were no black people on Beverly Hills 920 at all. There's maybe one or two, period. Okay? There was the one guy that got killed somehow, and then there was the black guy that happened to be everybody's friend that was a basketball player, Deshaun. And then there was a black woman, supposed to be a writer, Mariah. Only three black people in the whole series of 10 years. So the fact that they made a main cast member an African-American woman is huge. Okay, here's another tidbit. Her name? Vanessa Williams. A lot of people confused her with Vanessa L. Williams, which was also an actress who won Miss America in, in 1983, but she had to take back her crown. They took back her crown because apparently she had posted in Playboy at some point. But she didn't win the crown. Um... So I'll get to Vanessa L. Williams some other time because I could go on and on about her. Um, she's she was an actress, singer, dancer, the whole bit. Um, but Vanessa Williams from Melrose Place. After that, they didn't somehow they wrote her character out. Only they made it seem like it was just um whatever because. They, somehow, in the first season, she meets the guy, Terrence, and they fall in love and get married in a couple of months. And then, that's how she gets written off the show. 
Um, so, you know, uh, some backstage stuff, although it wasn't really backstage, was that she didn't really like the way she was treated. And after that, she just couldn't find any roles because apparently, I don't know, some people tried to um, peg her as just a black girl, like as Rhonda from the show. And so, honestly, um, the only other role I ever saw Vanessa Williams in was um, she was in this movie with Heather Locklear, just by chance, I guess. Um, called Flirting Flirting with Forty, where Heather Locklear is a star and Vanessa Williams plays her friend. Um, yeah, so there was a big to do about that. Um, but um, getting back to Mars Place a little bit. Okay, so then apparently, apparently, because the people were all the same age, of course, there was backstage dating and all that stuff. Um, Grant Show, who played Jake, was involved with um, Laura Leighton for a while until they broke up, and then she got involved with Doug Savant, and now they've been married for years and years and years, got kids in the whole bit, so, uh, yeah, and then that was a launch pad for Andrew Shue, which is Elizabeth Shue's brother. Um, and that was a launch pad also for Courtney Thorne Smith. And she's been in countless other things as a supporting role. She was in According to Jim as a wife. And she was in Two and a Half Men as Lindsay Allen's girlfriend. So apparently she's made pretty good for herself and done and been an actress the whole time. Um, I just wanted to highlight these two shows because. They were very instrumental in showing people what life was really like, kind of. I mean, I know it's a soap opera, but when you're in your 20s and living in your first apartment with people you don't really know, you don't really know how to who to trust and everything. And so that piece of it was real life. But the rest of it was like, you know, of course, visualized to a certain degree, but I just wanted to highlight them because they're two sister shows. So, um, okay, hope you enjoy.